afternoon, cloud nerds, and welcome back to beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. We are at AWS reInvent day four, afternoon of day four here on theCUBE. I'm Savannah Peterson, joined by my fabulous co-host, Paul Gillen. Paul, you look sharp today, how are oh, you doing? You're just as fabulous, Savannah, you always <laughs> look sharp. I appreciate that, they pay you enough to, to keep me buttered up over here, it's, 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 it's wonderful. You're holding up well. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about our next conversation. Two fabulous gentlemen, please welcome Sam and Monty. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And, and it was great of the PR team to send the most interesting man alive. <laughs> yes, <laughs> in person, yeah. yeah. Yeah, in the flesh. Our favorite guest so far. Uh, so how's the show been for you guys? Uh, it's been phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, just spending a lot of time with customers and partners and AWS. It's been great, it's been great. It is great, it's really about the community. It feels good to be back. Yeah. Eating good yeah. food, getting my steps in uh, above goal, so I yeah. feel like yeah. the balance yeah. is good. We walk enough of these convention centers right. that you can enjoy the libations and the, and the yeah. delicious food yeah. that's in yeah. Las Vegas and, yeah. and still not go home feeling like a cow, which but is yeah. awesome. Sure. It's, it's a win-win. To Sam's point though, meeting with customers, meeting with other technology providers that we may be able to partner with, and most importantly, in my role especially, meeting with all of our AWS key stakeholders in the partnership, so yeah, Everyone's it's been great. Here. Yeah. And it's so yeah. it's just different having a conversation in person, yeah. even, like, even like us right now. So just in case folks aren't familiar, tell me about Talent. Yeah, well Talent uh, is, a, is a data integration company, and we've been around for a while. Um, we have uh, tons of different ways to get data from point A to point B. Uh, lots of different sources, lots of different connectors, uh, and it's all about creating accessibility to that data. And then on top of that, we, all, we also have a number of solutions around governance, data health, data quality, data observability, which I think is really taking off. Uh, and so that's kind of how we're you know, changing the business here. Casual, casual change, data and governance. I don't know if anyone's talking about that at all on yeah, the show floor, been right? Yeah, been a big topic <laughs> here. We've had a lot of conversations with the customers about that. Well, what is, so governance, what, what new dynamics has the cloud introduced into data governance? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think, I think historically, you know, you've been, like customers have been able to have their data on-prem, they, you know, they put it into things like data lakes, and now having the flexibility to be able to bring that data to the cloud is, uh, you know, it, it opens up a lot of doors, but it also opens up a lot of risks. So, you know, if you think about the chief data officer role, where you have, okay, I want to be able to bring my data to the users, uh, I want to be able to do that at scale, operationally, but at the same time, you have a tension then between the governance and the rules that really restrict the way that you can do that, and you want to, so like the very, very strong tension between those two things. It's a, it really is a delicate balance, and especially as people are trying to accelerate and streamline their cloud projects, a lot to, a lot to consider. How do you all help them do that? Yep. Monty, well, let's go yep. to you. Yep. Yeah, it, it, we keep saying data, data, what is it really? It's ones and zeros. Yeah. In this day and age, everything we see, we touch, we do, we either use data <clears throat> or we create data. And then that, um, we are data, we, quite we literally. We literally are yep. data. Yeah. And so then what you end up with is all these disparate data silos and different applications with different data and how do you bring all that together? And that's where customers really struggle. And what we do is we bring it all together and we make it actionable for the customer. We make it very simple for them to take the data, use it for the outcomes that they're looking for in their business initiatives. Well, yeah. So what is it, expand on that, what do you mean make it actionable? Do you tag it, do you organize it in some way? What's what's different yeah. about your approach? Well, it's, I mean, it's a really flexible platform, right? And I think like you're, you know, we're part of a broader ecosystem. So you know, even internally, like we we are a data-driven company. Um, you know, coming into the company in April, uh, I was able to come in and get like this real-time view of like, hey, here's where our teams are, right? And it's like all in front, you know, in front of me in a Tableau dashboard that's populated from you know talent integration, bringing data out of our different systems, different systems like Workday or our, you know, where we're, you know, giving offers out to people, right? And so everything from managing headcount to where our AWS spend is, all of that stuff. Now, we've heard a lot of talk about data, and in fact, at the keynote yesterday, there was uh, focus mainly on data, and uh, uh, data, uh, getting data out of silos. How do you play with AWS in that role? Because AWS has other data integration partners. For sure. What, what's different about your relationship? Yeah, yeah. Well, we, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, we've, we've had a strong relationship with AWS for many years now. Um, we've got more than 80 connectors into the different wow. AWS um, services. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we're not new to the AWS game. Um, we align with the sales teams, we align with the partner teams, and then of course we align with all the different business units and verticals so that we can enact that co-sell motion uh, together with AWS. Yeah, and I think from a, from a product standpoint, again, just being a hyper-flexible platform, being able to put, you know, again, any, you know, any sort of different type of source of data to any type of different destination, you know, so things like Redshift, being able to, to 
bring data into those cloud data warehouses is, um, you know, is really how we do that. And then I think we have, you know, between you know, bringing data from A to B, we're also able to do that along a number of different dimensions, whether that's just like, hey, we just need to do this once a day to batch, all the way down to like event-driven things, streaming and the like. That customization must be really valuable mm -hmm. for your customers mm -hmm. as well. So one of the big themes of the show has been cost reduction. Mm -hmm. Obviously, with the economic times we're potentially dipping our toes into, as well as just in general, always wanting to increase margins. How do you help yeah. customers cut costs? Well, it, you know, it's cost cutting, but it's also speed to market. The yeah. faster you can get a product to market, the the faster you can help your customers. And let's say healthcare life sciences, pharmaceutical companies, patient outcomes. Great and timely example there. Patient outcomes. Yeah. How do they get drugs to market quicker? Well, AstraZeneca leveraged our platform along with AWS, and they even said cool. for every dollar that they spend on data initiatives, they get $40 back. That's a billion dollars wow. savings by getting a drug to market one month faster. Mm -hmm. Everybody wins. It's so how do, you, how do you accelerate that process? Well, by giving them the right data, taking all the massive data that I mentioned, siloed and everywhere, and making it so that the data scientists can take all of this data and make use of it, make sense of it, and move their drug uh, production uh, along much quicker. Yeah, and I think I think there's other things too, like you know, being very flexible in the way that it's deployed. Again, I think like you have this historical story of like it takes forever for data to get updated, to get you know, to get put together. I need it now yeah. and in and, context. You know, and like, yeah. and I think where we're coming from is more of a almost more of a <coughs> of a developer focus, where it, like you know, your jobs are able to be deployed in any way you want. If you want to containerize those, if you want to scale them, you need to schedule them that way. Like we've plugged into a lot of different ecosystems. So that's, I think that's a, that's a differentiation as well. Yeah. yeah. It, I, I want to hang out on this one just for a second because it's such a great customer success story and so powerful. I mean, in VC land, if you can take one, a dollar and make two, they'll give you a 10X valuation. 40, that is so compelling. How do you think, I mean, do you think other customers could expect that kind of savings? A billion dollars is nothing to laugh at, especially yeah. when we're talking about developing yeah. a vaccine. Yeah, yeah, go for it, Sam. Yeah, I think I think you know it really depends on the use case, right? Like I think you know what we're trying to do is being able to say, hey, we have. Um, it's not just about cost cutting, but it's about tailoring the offerings. So you know we have other other customers like. Um, you know, major, uh, major fast food vendors, you know, they have mobile apps, and when you pull up that mobile app and you're going to do a delivery, uh, they want to be able to have a customized offering, right? And it's not like mass market, you know, 20% off. It's like they want to have a very tailored offer to that customer, or, you know, yeah. to, that, to that person that's pulling open that app. Yeah. And so, you know, we're able to help them architect and bring the, that data together so that it's immediately available and, you know, reliable. Uh, to you know, to be able to give those promotions. We we had AARP on the show yesterday. Mm -hmm. We're talking about 50 million subscribers and how they customize each one of their experiences. I, we all want it to be about us, and yeah. we don't want that generic. Ad. Yeah, go for it, Paul. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't want to break break the rhythm here, but the, but uh, one area where you really have. <laughs> Differentiated about two years ago, you introduced something called the Trust Score. Yeah, um, can you explain what that is and how that has For resonated sure. with your with your customers? Ooh, yeah. yeah, let's talk about. This. Yeah, so think. Yeah, the thing about the Trust Score is, um, you know, how many times have you gotten a set of data, and you and you look at it and you say, where did you get this data? Something doesn't look right here. And with the Trust Score, what we're able to do is quantify and value the different attributes of the data, whether it's how much this is being used, we can look at, we can profile the data, and we have a trust score that runs over time where you can actually then look at each of these data sets, you can look at aggregates of data sets to then say, you know, if you're the data engineer, you can say, oh my, something has gone wrong with this particular data set. Go in, quickly pull up the data, you can see if some, uh, you know, some third party integration has polluted your data source. I mean, this happens all the time. And I think, you know, if you sort of compare yeah. this to the engineering world, you know, you are like you're always looking to like solve those problems sooner. You know, earlier in the in the chain. You know, you don't want your you don't want your consumer calling you saying, "Hey, I've got a problem with the data." Or I've got a problem you don't want with them the to know there was ever a problem. Yeah. So in the trust, yeah, yeah. So the trust score helps helps those data engineers and those people that are taking care of the data address those problems sooner. Yep. And and how challenging? How much data does somebody need to be able to 
get to the point where they can have a trust score, if you know what yeah. I'm trying to say. Yeah. How, how do we train I mean, that? It can, be, it can be all the way from just like a single data source that's getting updated, all the way to like, you know, very, you know, very large complex ones. And that's where we've introduced like this hierarchy of data sets. So it's not just like, hey, we have, you've got, you know, a billion data sources here, and like here are the trust scores, but it's like you can actually architect this to say like, okay, well I have, a, I have these data sets that belong to finance, right? Mm -hmm. And then like finance will actually get Here's a you know here's the trust score for these data sets that they rely on. What what causes data sets to become untrustworthy? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think I mean it happens all the time. A so lot like, of different I mean, things, right? And I'm, you know, in my in my history, you know, in the different companies that I've been at, you know, on the product side, we have seen um, you know different integrations that maybe somebody changes something. Uh, you know, in upstream, you know, some of those integrations can actually be quite brittle. And as a consumer of that data, it's not necessarily your fault but oh, that data ends totally up getting extreme. put into your production database, all of a sudden your data engineering team is spending two days unwinding those transactions, mm -hmm. fixing the data that's in there, and all the while that, you know, that bad data that's in your production system is causing a problem for somebody that is ultimately relying on is that. Is that usually a governance problem? Um, you know, I think I think governance is probably a separate, you know, is probably a separate set of constraints. I think this is really like, you know, this is sort of the tension between wanting to get all of the data available to your consumers versus like wanting to have the the quality around it as well. It, it, it's a tough balance, and I think that it's it's really interesting. Everybody wants great data, and you could be making decisions that affect people's wellness, quite right, frankly, for sure. uh, very dramatically if you're ill-informed. So that's very yeah. exciting. Oh, to your point, we are all data. <laughs> right. So if the data is bad, we're not going to get the outcomes that we want, ultimately. And we, so. we certainly want the best outcomes for ourselves. Yeah. And so we, we track that data health for its entire life cycle mm -hmm. throughout the process. That's cool, and that probably increases your confidence in the trust score as well, because you're looking at so much right. data all the time. Exactly. Across. What a, you got a smart thing going on over here. I like it. I, well, I like it a lot. We believe in it, and yeah, yeah. Uh, so does <laughs> AWS, uh, because they are a strong partner of ours, and, and so do customers. I think we mentioned, we've had some phenomenal customer conversations uh, what, what along with- What a success with... story and case study. Like, oh, I want to yeah. like dust your shoulders off right now if I wasn't <laughs> tethered in. That's super impressive. Yeah. So what's next for y'all? Um, yeah, so I think we're going to continue down this path of, of data health and data governance. Um, you know, again, I kind of talked about the you're talking about data health being this differentiator on top of just moving the data around and being really good at that. Um, I think you know you're also going to have different things around like country level or state level, uh, you know, governance. You know, I mean, yeah. literal, literal laws that you need to comply with, right? And so, like, CCPA being California. able to say, yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, among a long list. Oodles. Of ones, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think um, you know we're going to be doing uh, some interesting things there. We're continuing to, to prolif we are continuing to proliferate the sources of data that we connect to. We're always looking for the latest and greatest things to put, you know, to put the data into. And uh, you know, I think you're going to see some interesting things come out of that too. And oh. we continue to grow our relationship with AWS, our already strong relationship. So you can procure talent products through the AWS Marketplace. We just announced uh, Redshift serverless support mm -hmm. for Talon. All which, the rage. Which yep. sounds amazing, but because we've been doing this for so long with AWS, dirty little secret, that was easy for us to do. Because we're already doing all the stuff. So we made the announcement and everyone's like, congratulations, we're like, thanks. Look yeah. at y'all, full of the humble brags, <laughs> right. I love it. Yeah. Uh, so about, uh, uh, Talent has gone through some twists and turns over the last couple of years. Company uh, went private, was uh, purchased by Tomo Bravo about a yep. year and a half ago. Uh, at that time, your CEO said that it was a chance to really refocus the company on, on, core, on some core strategic initiatives and move forward. Both of you joined, obviously, after that happened, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, what did you see about sort of the new talent that attracted you, yeah. made you want to come over here? For sure, yeah, I think, um, you know, when I, when I got a chance to talk to the board and talk to Chris, our, our chair, um, we talked about there being the growth thesis behind it, right? So I think, you know, this is a, you know, Toma's been a great partner to Talent. We, uh, I think we're able to do some things internally that would be, I think, fairly challenging for companies that are in the public markets right now. I think especially, you know, just a lot of pressure on different prices and uh, yeah. cost yeah. of capital and all of that. Right now. So, yeah. That was yeah. a really I mean, casual way of stating yeah. that, but yeah, just well, a little pressure. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of pressure. Uh, I also think, um, and who knows, you know, who knows how long that's going to, how long that's going to last, right? But uh, you know, I think you know we've got a we've got a great board in place. 
they've been a, a very strong strategic partner for us, talking about you know all of the different ways that we can grow. And so you know, it's been a, I think it's been a, a, a good partner for us to have kind of you get found things going. One, of, one of the strengths of Toma's strategy is synergy between the companies that they've acquired. And they've, oh, for sure. They've acquired about 40 software companies. Are you seeing? Synergy, you talk to those other companies a lot? Yeah, well, so I mean, I have a, yeah, so I have an operating partner. I talk with him, you know, on a weekly, you know, sometimes daily basis. Uh, if we have questions or like, hey, what are you seeing in this space? You know, we can get plugged into advisors very quickly. So, you know, it's been a, I think it's been a, a very helpful thing where, you know, otherwise, you know, you're relying on your personal network or, or things like that. But this is why Monty was saying it was easy for you guys to go serverless. Mm. Yeah. Yes, yeah, and we keep talking about trust, but in this case, Tomo Bravo really trusts our senior leadership team to make the right decisions that Sam and I are here making as we move forward. So, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a great relationship. It's a good team. It sounds like yeah. it, all the love. I can feel the love even from you guys yeah. talking about Lots it. It's genuine, you're not just getting paid to show this. Yeah. That's, that's, that's fantastic. Are we getting paid for this? Or? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, some folks in the audience are probably going to want your autograph after okay. this, but you know, you never know, Pic although you get that a lot. Pictures are available after, uh, after yeah, the yeah, 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 <laughs> selfies, <laughs> selfies are 10 bucks. Right. That's how I get my booze yeah. buzzed. Uh, so last question for you, we have a challenge here on the Cube of reInvent. We're looking for your 30 second hot take, think of it as your thought leadership sizzle reel, biggest takeaway, key themes for from the show or looking forward into 2023. Yeah. Sam, well, you're ready to rock, yeah, go. Yeah, totally. I think, I think you know, you're going to continue to hear the, you know, that, the tension between being able to bring the data to the masses versus the simplicity and being able to um, being able to do that in a way that is compliant with all the different laws, but also, you know, and then clean data. It's like a lot of different challenges that, that arise when you do this at scale. And so I think, you know, yeah. if you look at you look at the things that AWS is announcing, I think you look at the things that, you know, any any sort of vendor in the data space are announcing, you see them sort of coming around to that, you know, to that set of ideas. And so I think like we're in a, you know, it gives me a lot of confidence in the direction that we're going that, um, you know, we're like we're doing the right stuff, and we're you know we're meeting customers and and prospects and partners, and everybody is like you know we kind of get into this conversation, and I'll say, yeah, that's that's it. You know, we want to get involved in that. You can really feel the momentum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. true. It's great. What about you, yeah. Monty? I mean, I don't need 30 seconds. I, I mentioned it. Great. Between Talent and AWS, we're aligned from the sales teams to the product teams, the partner teams, and the alliances. We're just moving forward and growing this relationship. I love it, that was perfect. And on that note, <laughs> Sam, Monty, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having us. I, I'm sure your careers are going to continue to be rad at Talent, and, and I can't wait to continue the conversation. Yeah, it's a great team. Yeah, clearly. I mean, look at you two. If you're, if you're any representation of the culture over there, they're doing something great. <laughs> thank all of you for tuning in to our nearly, well, shoot, I think now over 100 interviews at AWS reInvent in Sin City. We are hanging out here, Paul and I. have got a couple more for you, so we hope to see you tuning in. With Paul Gillen, I'm Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in high-tech coverage.